So let's get, let's get to uh, six. All right. And verse number nine. And it says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Yeah. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And the right roles were given unto them, to, unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season unto their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So, you have to go back to the beginning and remember that John is in the spirit and John is having visions of these things. And he tells us he's having visions of things that have been, that are, and that shall be. So in verse number um, 10, he gives us the clue of, verse number 9, he gives us the clue of uh, who these people are. It says that they were slain for the word of God and the testimony which they have. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, wilt thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And he tells the white robes were given unto every one of them. And he told them to rest for yet a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So this part has been fulfilled and will continue to be fulfilled. And the reason why is because we can go to the scriptures and we can find many martyrs of Christ. Those people who have died for the gospel. And even today, as we're speaking, there are people that are being martyred for Christ. It might be happening in the United States of America as of yet, but in other countries, these things are still taking place. There are people being hung, killed, murdered every day for their belief in Christ. So this has been fulfilled. Stephen was stoned for Christ. Uh, James' head was cut off for Christ, for the gospel. Peter, Paul, all of them were persecuted. For the gospel of Christ. So there were many martyrs uh, that they, their, their cause of death was because of their faith and because of their belief. So this was fulfilled. But it's still being fulfilled because there are constantly people being uh, persecuted and being murdered for the gospel of Christ. Now, remember all these souls that are coming before the Lord, there's nothing in essence, there is nothing that is dead to God. Amen. There's nothing that's dead to God. Everything is alive to God. And that's why in the scripture Paul would say, that's why we still say he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because God is not the God of the dead, he's the God of the living. For in the presence of God, inside of God, there's nothing that is dead. Because God is the source of life. And anything in the presence of God has to be alive. Yes. And so that's why Paul would say to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so, you know, many times we, and in that, those are scriptures that we um, use and we think that people are in heaven and they're living and that they're existing and they're doing, even though they're alive to God, to themselves, they're not in a place of consciousness to where they know that they're dead and where they are. So when we die, our very thoughts perish. We don't know anything until our bodies is reconnected. Uh, until our bodies are reconnected with our spirit, and then we shall awake and then we shall know. But outside of that, we're not in a place where we're living and we're moving and we have knowledge of what is going on. But to God, he can still make these statements and say that we're living. So also, taking this also into consideration, we can look at the analogy of Abel and the analogy of Jesus Christ and how the blood of Abel cried out to God from the ground to avenge the blood uh, that was shed uh, on Cain. And likewise, Christ's blood speaking better things than that of Abel. And so even though it's not 
them in essence or in reality um, speaking or talking to God even if they're dead or John is seeing something in the vision and, and, and the souls of these ones who have died are crying out to the Lord to revenge those enemies um, for killing them but it's not a literal thing they're not literal souls on the altar somewhere in heaven crying out to God asking God to revenge the murderers mm -hmm. so you gotta remember that John is in the spirit and when John is in the spirit we have to go with John in the spirit to understand what is um, taking place so the scripture that I would use as well that vengeance is mine say of the Lord I will repay so God is the ultimate one who can be able to judge those um, individuals who have persecuted those individuals for the gospel sake but how will they be persecuted or how will they be judged if one who, like Paul, was ignorant of what he did, but he later came and repented? You see? So then that individual now no longer is under judgment because now they come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ and now become saved. So therefore, whatever they have done has been washed away. So now it's just talking from the standpoint of the Lord repaying those individuals who have killed those people for the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and for the word of God. So, um, yeah, so this is a, 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 a something that has passed and will continue to go on. Because I believe here in America, it's going to come for a time that where Americans will start being persecuted and killed for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it, it will be a continuation. You had your hand up. No, but I, I I do have a question, but forgive me, I don't have the scripture. Okay. But um, it's the the scripture that talks about in the end times when there will be two bodies from the past right. that will lay out for three days. Right. And some say it's going to be Moses and Elijah. And Elijah. Right. Right. How does that tie into these last days? No, <clears throat> I'm gonna get that. Are you all right? Yeah. Okay. Now that's gonna be a whole other study. Okay. Right, to get into. Okay. And the reason why that study is gonna um, be something to get into is because many people do say that it's Moses and that it's Elijah, but also. When you read the Bible and you understand what it transpired, Enoch was also translated. That's right. Amen. He did not see death. That's right. So I, I'm 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 having a, a, a not an issue, but I'm having a a, a a time with the individuals and how it's going to pan out. Mm -hmm. That's something that I've I've been wondering, I've been thinking, mm -hmm. and I've been looking into. Because also, there's some stuff in history that we don't have within the Bible that has suggested that something transpired of that sort after the tearing down of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD. Mm -hmm. right. But with that history, it's hard to it's hard to verify it in a sense to say if this was if this truly happened. Or if this truly was the fulfillment of what Revelation was talking about. So because I cannot verify it, I, I won't say that that was true. But there are some things that one by the name of Joseph, who was a, a, a great historian writer of Jewish culture, he writes in his book called Caesar and Christ. Mm -hmm. There's a book called Caesar and Christ. And he writes in detail of some things that transpired after that, dealing with two prophets. Mm. That was, so that was slain. It, that goes into, he goes into a lot of detail of some stuff that transpired shortly after um, the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. Right. And the book is called Caesar and Christ. We used to have two hardback books. It was a big, thick book that we used to have it. And um, he goes into some great detail about some things that transpired in those days. It's called Caesar and Christ. And Joseph, I believe the name was, was a, a historian writer that wrote a lot of. Uh, a lot of Jewish history. But the book was called Caesar and Christ. Like Julius Caesar. Yeah. Caesar and Christ. Got it. So, so to, for that, I have to kind of
study on one and really pray on because how it all fits with the prophecies of the scriptures. All right. But matter of fact, even while we're dealing with it, let's go, let's find that scripture and read it. Let's find that scripture and read it. It's in the book of Revelation. I'm going to say it's probably 11. Revelation 11 and go up, right? Yes, let's go up. Start at 4? No, 5? Yeah, matter of fact, let's start at um, verse 1. Right, right. Let's start at verse Amen. 1. Amen. Let's start at verse 1. And there, there was given, and there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Mm -hmm. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. <laughs> and if any man will hurt them, Fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all the plague as often as they will. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that's why they think it's Moses and Elijah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where, where also our Lord was crucified. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Mm -hmm. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying, Unto them come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Mm -hmm. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Okay. I want to, out of, out of what we read, verse number four, he says, these are the two olive trees. All right? That these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. So we got to investigate. These are the two olive trees. And remember John? It's in the spirit. And there's a lot of symbols that he sees. And he, he identifies the prophets. He said, I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand and two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. And he then tells us who the two witnesses are. And he says, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. So as he identifies the two witnesses, he describes them as the two olive trees and the two candlesticks. So these are symbols of something. And we have to investigate the symbolic representation of the olive trees and the candlesticks. All right? Would that be like how they said the angel, like a pastor, or you know? Well, normally they say uh, the angel, they normally refer to the angel as a pastor. But let's go to Revelation, the first chapter. Revelation, the first chapter. Unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, mm -hmm. unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, mm -hmm. and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and, be, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair, he, excuse me, his head and his ears were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. All right. So, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. All right. And we know the Son of Man is Jesus Christ. We know who that is. But he's in the midst of seven candlesticks. Revelations that we just came from. He said the two witnesses were the two olive trees right. and two candlesticks before the Lord. All right? So in the midst of seven of the candlesticks, there was one light unto the Son of Man. Let's jump down to verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars with which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. All right. 
Let's continue reading to chapter 2. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Okay. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, mm -hmm. and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Mm -hmm. All right? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment. So in the scripture preceding this, <coughs> candlesticks represented the church. Right. It represents right. the church. So Revelations 8, we read, right? Who we had just had before that was the Revelation 11. Revelation, right. Revelation 11. He said, I will give power, verse number three, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. All right? So now, going back into earlier verses and find out what the candlesticks represented. The candlesticks represented the church or the church is. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks Standing before the God of the earth. All right. So the latter part, keeping with the understanding of the candlesticks being the churches, this would have to be two churches in two areas. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have to get the olive trees. What is the representation of the olive trees? I think. I think. I think I, I was trying try to get a search in the scripture. I think we need to go to Zechariah 4. Okay. And I'm going to say two and one. And I'm also thinking about Jeremiah 11. Yes. Two to six, I think. Yes. Not two and one. Two. All right. Get Zechariah. said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel, that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, <laughs> saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, Say the Lord of hosts, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof, 
with shoutings crying grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands, his hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the earth. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which drew the two golden pipes, empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Amen. Bless. He said, these are the two anointed ones. The two anointed ones. All right? The two olive trees and the two anointed ones. They did what? That stood, that stand by the Lord. That stand by the Lord. Of the whole earth. Of the whole earth. All right? Jeremiah, the 11th chapter. Jeremiah. The 11th chapter. And the 12th verse. Yes, All right. Then shall the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense, but they, but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. For according to the number of thy cities where thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have ye yet have ye, excuse me, have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal? Baal. 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 Mm -hmm. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. What hath my beloved to do in mine house, seeing she hath wrought lewdness with many, and the holy flesh is passed from thee. When thou doest evil, then thou rejoicest. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair, and of goodly fruit, with the noise of a great tumult. He hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. Mm -hmm. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee hath pronounced evil against thee, for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and orphan incense 
unto Baal. Okay. Not there. Mm -hmm. So, 